In this video, I'll be showing you how to paint Green Goblin for Marvel Crisis Protocol. Welcome once again to another episode of Painting Protocol, Marvel Crisis Protocol painting videos by the Tales of War games. Now in this episode we're doing the Green Goblin, leader of the Spider Foes. Now for Green Goblin, he's got two main colours for himself. It's going to be the green on his skin and arms, and then purple on his boots, gloves, and his uh, chest piece and hat. And obviously you've got his glider and smoke trail and his um, pumpkin bombs as well, but the main colours are going to be those two first. Um, what we're going to be doing first is using moot green for his skin. Um, it is quite a very bright green. Um, you'd normally use it as a last layer skin, but with Green Goblin he does have quite bright skin. And What you want to be doing is going into all of this part on his legs. You want to be doing in between his boots and his ripped shorts, so on both sides here. Then you want to be doing his arms up here, again up to his ripped sleeves and down to his gloves. And then this arm here exactly the same. And then also you want to be doing his face, which is just up around there. Um, and then up to whereabouts his hood is. So we're going to be doing this in the full moot green. Then we're going to wash it down with um, some Beal Tan green shade. Then we're going to add the moot green again onto the highest parts to bring it back up to the same colour. Um, so what I'll do is I'll do the base coat and then we'll get onto the wash stage in a minute. Now with that initial green layer in, we're going to go in with Nagaroth Knight for all of the purple parts and that's just to make sure that we get all of the base colours down before we start shading and layering up. So, like I said, you want to do the boots, um, the gloves, his top, his shorts and his hat and it's just Nagaroth Knight all the way around. For his little satchel and the strap that goes round, try and leave that out for the time being. Um, we are going to be doing that in a kind of grey blacky blue colour um, but yeah we'll just go around Nagaroth Knight on all of this and just make sure it's a nice even coat and there's no undercoat showing anywhere left and obviously when you get up to where the skin is just make sure you as careful as you can not to get any on that green skin if you do just tidy it up with mooped green um, but yeah we'll do Nagaroth Knight around all of this and then we'll be back for the next step as you can see with those base coats done Green Goblin is already looking like his classic look. But the thing we need to do now is we need to shade everything. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using Bealtan Green on all of the skin. And we're just going to basically be as clean as we can, make sure it doesn't pull, and just get it in all the nooks and crannies of the skin, making sure it settles in all the recesses. And what we're going to be using for the purple is Druchy Violet. And again, you just want to kind of go over everything. It's better to do all of the skin first, let this settle, and then go back in and do all of the um, Druchy Violet and let that settle. Um, you probably shouldn't let it dry as well because if you suddenly get wash up to the end here and then wash there and it starts mixing, you're going to get some awful looking colours. Um, but yeah, you want to do Bill Town Green first. Let that all dry and settle down and like I said, look out for any pooling and just wipe it away as it's drying. And then Druchy Violet and then we'll be back once all the washes are done for the next stage. So now with those shades done, you can see it's just added a bit of depth, picked out the higher ridges, etc. Um, so the next thing we'll be doing, we're going to be doing a skin again and we're going to be going back in with Moot Green. And we don't need a lot of this, it's just going into those higher up places on the skin where the shade is kind of pointing them out, dulled it down a bit and you just want to go in and you're just brightening it up again so you just want to obviously look out where the shade has settled and just leave that in but you just want to pick it all out with moot green yet again and just make sure that it is pop in. Um, for the face you've got the ears on the side and his face as well. You just want to get the highest point so obviously his nose, the cheekbones, around his chin, his eyebrows as well. You can just see that it's just added 
extra layer and just makes him stand out a bit more. So what we'll go, we'll go around all the way around doing this to all of the green areas. Just making sure that you get the highest points and then we'll be back for the next step. Now with that moot green done you can see that it's given the skin some good definition with the shade and different highlights. Now the next thing that we want to be doing is getting a Zoraeus purple and you want them to do the same thing for all of the purple areas. Now this will take a bit longer because obviously he's got all of his boots, he's got his top um, and he's got gloves and his um, hood as well. But you just want to go in and all of the highest point edges you just want to pick out and you just want to be able to add this extra colour. Now Zoraeus purple isn't that bright compared to um, Nagaroth Knight, they're kind of very similar but just go around, highlight everything and then we're going to go in again with Gene Steeler purple on the same areas and then that will lighten it up. So what we'll do, we'll do all the Zoraeus purple first, come back and see what it looks like and then we'll do some of the Gene Steeler purple as well. As you can see with that Zoraeus purple it has brightened up that purple and added a bit of a highlight but it is a bit too dark for my liking so we are going to go in with Gene Steeler purple next. So we don't want to go too crazy on it because it will stand up too much but we just want to go in and do exactly the same as what we did. You just want all the highlights you just pick it up and as you can see that's instantly added a lot more uh, definition and picked out the highlights you just want to go all the way around do all of his cloak his hood and gloves shoes everything that's purple and just pick out all the edges with this color so what we'll do we'll just go around with all of this green steel of purple and everything and then we'll be back for the next step and now with the Gene Steeler purple done, you can see it really makes a purple pop. And next thing we can be doing is this pouch with the strap that goes all the way around. Um, and we're going to be doing this with Dark Reaper as a base, and then we're going to be using Thunderhawk blue as the next layer on top. So with this, obviously, you just need a nice thin detail brush. You just want to go in, you just want to follow it all the way up. Just be as careful as you can so you don't ruin it on the purple. If you do, just tidy it up with a little bit of Nagaroth Knight. Just uh, as it's near the edge of the uh, strap, it will be kind of in the recesses and shadows anyway. But you just go around with Dark Reaper all the way around, including the whole side, bottom, top of the pouch, the back of there, and then we'll be back to the next step. And there we go with the Dark Reaper. Now with the Dark Reaper we're going to have to do a couple of coats um, just to make sure you get a nice thick colour. But what we're then going to be doing is going over with Thunderhawk Blue. Now what you want to do is just go in on the edges of the satchel and you just want to pick out just the top part. And just go in all behind. everywhere that you can see just so it kind of highlights it a bit there as you can see that and then again on the satchel you want to do the very top part and then just this part as well where the flap is like so and then we're just going to try and go down here as neatly as possible and like I said if you do get any on the purple just tidy it up with Nagaroth Nightshade um, don't worry about trying to edge highlight, just kind of go over and just add an extra little bit of colour in the middle of everything. So we'll do that with the Dark Reaper and then we'll be back for the next step. And now with the Thunderhawk Blue you can see that the pouch and the strap is nicely highlighted. Now what I've done next I have painted these pumpkins in Wraithbone and I've also done his eyes and mouth in Wraithbone as well. So what we're going to be doing with the two pumpkins and the eyes, we're going to be using uh, Citadel Contrast Griffhound Orange and this will give you the nice orangey pumpkin colour you just want to make sure as you get up to the hands again that you don't uh, cover any of the purple in the colour 
you just want to go around and colour all of those in like so and then when it gets to the eyes if you get a small detail brush and you just want to go in with the same colour and then what you need to do you need to brace yourself on the table and just go in and you're just colouring that in you're just kind of dragging down until it just sits there now obviously try and not get any on the moot green if you do once it's dried just go over with the moot green but you can see there just adds as menacingly orange eyes um, but yeah you just go around with the pumpkins and just make sure you get with the tops leave to smoke for the time being we're going to do that a little bit of a different color um, but yeah you just want to make sure that you get all of the pumpkin bomb with that color so I'll finish these off and then we'll be back for the next step and with that griffhound orange done we're now going to do the uh, smoke parts of the pumpkin bombs and we're going to be using a yand and yellow for this as the first part um, we're not going to be using race bone or anything we're going to use this khaki color because it will help um, do the kind of, have the kind of fiery effect so what you want to do is just cover all of this and then what we are going to do afterwards we're going to add some of that orange again into the top part just to kind of give it a bit of a fiery gradient almost um, and of course when you get up to just underneath his gloves just need to make sure you are careful not to get any on the purple but you just want to go around make sure you've got a nice even coverage no pooling everywhere of course but we'll do the yand and yellow and then be back for the next step with that yand and yellow contrast dried you just want to take some of the griffound orange now you don't need a lot but you just want to go in just into the top part and just add a little bit there you can see you've kind of got that flame effect now you can do this when both of the contrast paints are wet i've been kind of wet blend between the two but i just find it easier to wait until it's dry and then you can just drag downwards so as you can see there it's got its flames what we'll do, we'll let that dry and then we're just going to add a teeny bit of black on the top just as a kind of smoke coming off of it and then we're going to work on the glider and the smoke stream so we'll be back after that. And now with that orange done all that we're going to do is just add a little bit of black just on the very tips of this smoke. You don't have to cover it, it's just to kind of give a smoky look like so of the hand of course be careful because of the gloves but you just want to kind of go in there just dab a little one like I said you don't want to overpower the orange you just want to do it like so so after that that is Green Goblin done and what we need to do now is just jet and the first colour we're going to be using for that is Lead Belcher and we're going to cover all of his jet in lead belcher including you've got the little foot holders there so you've got to be careful use a smaller brush for that and um, the whole of the front we can be doing that you just want a nice even coat just make sure you cover everything up there's no primer showing but you want to cover both top bottom and then you want to go up to just up to this smoke cloud here so you just want to do lead belcher all the way around make sure it's a nice even coat if you need to do two coats just to get a solid color um, do that but we'll be back for the next step after that and now with that lead belcher done what we're going to do is we're just going to do a nice even coverage of known oil over everything this will just pick up all of the recesses and just darken down that metal quite a bit now obviously try and be a bit careful as you get around the shoes you don't want to splodge too much on the purple area that you've already highlighted but you just want to go around make sure it settles everywhere and um, keep an eye on it just make sure there's no pooling at all and just cover it all in null oil so what i'll do i'll finish this off let it all dry and then be back for the next now with that null oil all dried you can see it's just dulled everything down so what we're going to do we're going to use 
Vallejo model uh, chrome. You only want a little bit on this because this paint is very, very bright. But we're just going to be going around and just highlighting the top edges for it. And just pick out the top point. So just go around. You don't need a lot of these. You just want to give an extra, just a little edge highlight here and there. Just where the light will be picking it up. And let's go around and do that. Then we're going to go in where the eyes are. We're going to be going in with um, Wraith Bone. Because we're going to hit that with this orange contrast as well, a bit like his eyes. So we'll be doing that. But just go around, pick out the highest points, including the uh, foot parts. And then obviously, as you go around, just make sure you don't get any on the shoe itself. You just want to pick out all the points, including the engine. Just do couple of lines just go around do all of that and we'll be back for the next step and with that chrome done what we're going to do now is do the smoke so what we're going to be doing is we're going to do black up to about here then we're going to put white into a, up to about here then in between we're going to add a little bit dry brush a little bit of gray so it still has the black but then blends into the white and then it will kind of have a nice gradient and then we need to add in some of the uh, flame effect as well that's coming out of his exhaust. So that is it. You want to do black up to about halfway. Um, and you can use any old black I'm using, just Vallejo black. And you just want to make sure that you get everything covered. And what we'll do once this is uh, done, we'll probably use something like an eshin grey just on the top just to kind of highlight a little bit of it so it's not just pure black and then when we get into those greys because we'll be dry brushing it it will have some of that black underneath as well so it should uh, give a nice little gradient now of course you could use something like a contrast black templar if you really wanted to um, and then blend in using different colours like that but I prefer getting a solid coat of black and then using other colours uh, to create the smoke effect so what we'll do we'll go around like I said you want to get up to about we do it up to about here probably about there all the way around and then that area is going to be white but we'll just do the black first then we'll do the white and then we'll blend in the grey so I'll be back once all the black's done and then with that black dry what you want to do is get Vallejo Dark Sea Grey and we're going to be doing that coming out of the exhaust and we're just going to go into where the black is if you get a bit on the black that's not a problem because we do want to kind of blend the two together so that's going to be our first layer and with them we're going to be using a Vallejo Sea Grey as well, which is, creates much more of a white colour. So if you do that all the way round, you just want to find where the two points meet, like so. And like I said, between this area we're going to be uh, kind of dry brushing grey as well, just to try and get a blend between them all. So to fill that in, And then we'll be back for the next step. And now with that dark sea grey dried, you want to be going in with sea grey and that will give you the white that we're looking for. And you just want to cover up everything that we've just uh, done. And just leave it just a little bit of that dark sea grey in between the black and the sea grey. And you just want to go all the way around. And what we're going to be doing in a minute is going over this with some pure white just a little dry brush and then we're also going to be going over the clouds in a grey as well so just cover this all up make sure it's all done including the bottom and that gives you that kind of initial look and then we're going to kind of go down into the uh, greys as well and with the dark sea grey done 
we're now going to be going on to the dry brushing. So the first thing we're going to be doing is we're going to be using Dark Creeper and this is all on the bottom. You just want to go along and just pick up all of the edges of this. You can kind of see it just breaks up all of that pure black. Gives it a little bit of a blacky grey tone which is exactly what we want. You go all the way around try and just kind of keep going up and down because so it only picks up the edges and then you might find as you get around to this part you just need you might need a little lower detail brush and a dry brush to dry brush around so you're just going around and picking it all up and then you can get up to about this area around here and then we're going to go into a bit of a lighter color to then transition into this white so once you go there you can use the same brush and we're going to be using some of that dark sea grey that we used before and if you're using the same brush because you've got some of that dark creeper still in the bristles you can then kind of get a bit of a darker colour and you just want to this was going to be a bit lighter and see it starts picking up into the white I'm just going around all the way around and because it does have some white and a dark sea grey as well as some of the dark reaper you've then got this nice transition into the white so you just want to go about halfway down over some of that dark reaper dry brush you've just done and there you go you've got a nice little transition between them so when we get into this area you want to be going a little bit higher because you've done that white you kind of want to darken it back down again just make sure that you've got enough off and then yeah you just want to go in and just do the top parts just so it gets a little dusting of it and you've got to transition into that white and the grey just go around make sure that you've caught all the pieces that you want to. If you feel like you've done too much you can then go back in with the Dark Reaper again. But if you do that and then we're going to add some colour onto the end. Maybe a little bit of colour down. And then what we'll do, we'll add a little bit of colour in here, a little bit of colour in there. And then it will just bring everything together. And so with the dry brush done, all that we're going to do is add a little bit of colour coming out of the thruster. We're going to use Yandan Yellow to start off with. We're going to be using something quite similar to what we did for using the smoke bomb. So we're just going to add some yellow bits coming out here. We just want to streak down a little bit. And let it kind of fade out. Just like so. You just want to make sure that you cover most of that yellow bit. And while that's still wet, we're going to get some Griffhound Orange. And we're just going to go halfway in and then just basically drag outwards like so and just add a little bit into that yellow and there you go you've got the fiery rocket with the smoke trail behind and that is green goblin done so what we're going to do we're going to get them based and we'll see what the final product looks like and there's the finished model. If you like that video, please hit the like and subscribe button to help the channel grow. Check out the Tales of Crisis podcast where we chat all things Marvel Crisis Protocol. If you want to see any specific characters painted up for the Painting Protocol series, let me know in the comments below and we'll be sure to cover them in future episodes. But until next time, take care and we'll see you soon.